Destiny Defining Decisions When it comes to destiny, our decisions play a major role and the outcome is defined by the decisions made in the process. It isn't so much about the decisions versus what guides your decisions. So my question is this, what guides your decisions? What factors do you consider when it comes to making decisions? Which values do you take into consideration before making a decision or decisions? Do you have principles that you hold on to prior to making decisions in your life? You know, there is no insignificant decision. Neither are there small nor big decisions. Many wheels turn when a decision is made, regardless of how significant, insignificant, big or small the decision is. The outcome of a decision is what determines whether or not, in your opinion, the decision was big, small, significant or insignificant. For example, for most people, the prayer of salvation is best appreciated after they begin living the kingdom life. However, on the day the decision was made, there wasn't much to look out for. Amen. A decision about salvation, marriage, a contract, and you name the rest, determines destiny. So too is Destiny determined when a decision is made to keep your sink clean, to do your laundry, to mow your lawn, and to do all the mundane tasks that come your way every day. We cannot undermine the power of decisions. Decisions have an impact on destiny. Think about it. Where you are in life today is is as a result of a series of decisions you made or that someone made on your behalf. I bet you agree with me that life is not an event lived by chance because an undecided mind is a decision made anyway. A great character in the Bible by name Elimelech can be referred to as someone who made a destiny-defining decision for himself and his family. He's not mentioned frequently in the Bible. However, the lessons we learn from his life can forever refine how we make decisions. We are introduced to Elimelech and his family in Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. Scriptures say this about them, that is in Elimelech and his family. It says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women. One named Opar and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Marlon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Amen. Now let's delve deeper into the life of Elimelech and learn more about destiny-defining decisions. Amen.